Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be painting PBRs and I'll go through with a touch of detail how to paint on different maps so you can get that PBR look with your models and materials. This isn't a beginner's tutorial so I won't be going over PBR materials. If you need to know what they are then check out the links in the description. Also take a look at my painting playlist if you want to know more about that and I'll be adding this one to the playlist. If you like what you see here I've got a full character course so all that I've done to get to this point you can find out more in that course. Again, links in the description. So I've been working on this character here and I'm in the texture painting workspace and I'm working on the boots at the moment, which you can see down here, these sort of gray rough boots. I always like to set up my texture painting workspace with the shader editor up the top corner here as well, so I can see which textures I'm painting on. And you can see the corresponding texture down here as it's being painted. So the boot is separate objects but it does share the same material which is this boot material up the top here which we can see. Now these boots are low poly if I go into edit mode you can see the poly count there and you could argue this is a bit too low but I'm expecting the character to be seen from about this distance so that's absolutely fine. So I'm out of edit mode and I've selected this leather strap up here which I'm going to work on and I'll go into texture paint mode. What I'm aiming for is something similar to this strap across here. I've still got this strap and this strap to do and a bit of work on the buckles. But you can see with this leather strap going around the middle of the boot here that some parts are shiny, some parts are rough, and we've got this sort of painted texture that's highlighting those rough bits as if they're worn. And this whole boot, and the character for that matter, has been baked from a high poly mesh. So I'll open up my shader editor over here, and you can see we've got a normal map here. I'll control shift left click so we can see the effects of that texture. You have to have the Node Wrangler installed for that to work. And you can see the normal maps there. Then we've got the roughness map, and you can see that there. The dark spots are glossy, and the white spots are rough. I've got a metallic map, and you can see that the buckles are metallic, and the rest is leather, so dielectric, and non-metallic, and therefore black. And then up the top here, I've got a cavity, which again, you can bake out in a similar way you bake out the normal map, using the pointiness node. And you can get all this detail from my baking playlist to find out how to go from high poly to low poly. Lastly, we've got the boots color and you can see the boots color there. It looks very flat, of course. When you combine them all, we get this. So I'm hoping that was just a catch up for most people on PBR materials. Incidentally, if you want to see how I made this model, there is a playlist of the live stream where I make this live. It is quite long because I'm chatting to people at the same time and answering questions, but you can check it out. Now let's talk about actually painting on them. For each of these different maps, with the exception of the normal map, you have the ability to paint on them. So the metallic was nice and easy, I could just fill in the white colour for the buckles and they were classed as metal. The roughness map is a bit more complicated and you have to think about where the rough parts are and where the shiny parts are and paint them accordingly in black and white. And the boots colour is fairly obvious. I'll start with the boots colour but I'll keep it on the principled BSDF for now so we can see the full impact of our painting. So control shift left click on the principled BSDF and again I'm painting the strap at the top here. Now before you start painting, it's important to select the right texture, so boots color in this case. And it should appear down the bottom in your image editor, which we can see here. But I've noticed a few glitches whilst painting, so make sure, just double check, you've got it selected in your shader editor as well. So that's highlighted white here, and you've got it selected down here. You should therefore be able to see it in here, and you shouldn't have any problems from that point. So the initial thing that I need to do is make sure the colors match up. So this one's a little bit darker than this one. I've already saved it to my color palette and it's just there, so I'll select that. But I'm in the paintbrush at the moment, so I need to go to the fill brush for this, choose that color, make sure I'm on mix at 100% and just fill that in. So we've got the same color matching up now. Go back to my draw brush and the next thing I like to do with a low strength on this one, so about 0.3 I've got, is just offer some color variation by mixing the colors and just going around and adding a bit in. Just gently brushing across the object as if there's discoloration within the leather. And that'll be fine. Now I'm going to add a bit of detail now with the rough outer parts that have been worn away of the strap. And for this, I use a noise brush. So I actually have a new brush. So I click on the new brush icon here and call this noise brush. I call it noise brush two as I've got two at the moment. And I'll scroll down and I'm going to choose a texture mask here, not a texture, but a texture mask. That's like your brush head. So I'll click new on that and go across to the texture properties and find that texture I just created. So brush mask, 
texture too. I'll change this to the noise. And that's all you need to change in here. Now when I go back to my active tool and workspace settings, scroll down to that brush mask, you can see there's a texture mask now there. I don't like to keep this on tiled, I like to keep it random. And now I can find the color I want, which is roughly this one here, and start painting that in. Now I've got a low strength at the moment, so I'll up that just slightly. And you can see that's working to add that sort of roughness around the bottom of the strap. I'll do the same for the top. I'll go into isolation mode for this with forward slash on my numpad, just to make it a little bit easier, and Alt left click to zoom in on that area. I'm quite zoomed in, so I can be relatively rough here around these straps as well, as if the leather's worn away. I'll make my brush a little bit bigger and just offer some of those around the place, brushing quite lightly. Forward slash on my numpad again, to come out of isolation mode, and we're certainly getting there with this texture. Now to really highlight it, I go a little bit lighter, so just up in the tone slightly, bring my brush right down, and just highlight a few areas, and maybe a few areas in here that have been caught by the buckle slightly. A few scratches. And that's not looking too bad. I'll just add a few more scratches in, bring my strength down a bit and offer some variation in color. And that's great. So it looks okay, but it looks a little flat. Whereas this one, when I move around it, has that sort of glossy shine to it in some places and roughness in others. Well, that's where we need to go to our roughness map. So just here, I need to change it at the top here, and that's where to change it first, it will change over here, and then just double check that you've got that selected, making sure it's highlighted white. Now the middle parts are going to be shinier, and the outside parts are going to be rough where they've worn away. So I'll come down to my color, I'll go to the middle, the quickest way to do that is to actually select your color here, bring the saturation right down, and then you know you're in the middle, and then you can just change the tone over here. So I'll start with, the shininess, which is towards the black. Still with my noise brush, is then it offers that sort of variation that you're going to get on this sort of surface and going across the middle of it here. I've got my strength really low still, so I'll put that up. And then all the time, checking the impact of that by moving around so you can see the reflections of the HDRI in the background. So I think a bit more in places. Vary the size of your brush as well. And every now and again, you can press Control, Shift, Left Click on your boots roughness to see how far you're going with this. There's my original and it's a bit more dark in places so I can afford to go further with this material. So control shift left click on the principal BSDF. I like my strength a little bit more. Maybe come a little bit darker as well. And that's looking better. Now we want the roughness so all the way to the white or close to and then into these areas, still again with my noise brush on. I can go fairly high on this, so I know that I want this nice and rough. And just around the edge here, I'll go into isolation mode to make it easier. And full stop on my numpad, or period key on my numpad to zoom in on that. At times it's quite tricky to see the difference that it's making, but as soon as you start moving around your object and get those light reflections in, you'll start to see the difference that it's making. Okay, forward slash to come out of that. And there you can see the impact that that roughness map is having, and it's working quite well. I just need a bit more of a tidy up to get it to a similar standard to this. And I'll just go back to the color map now, so select the color map here, boots color, should change down here, and just double check by making sure it's selected up here. And there we go, another leather strap for my boot. So hopefully this has helped you and that you've learned something. Let me know in the comments whether you want to see more of these more advanced tutorials and let me know how you're getting on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.